Ron Jeffer again for Rhinoco Technology. Now, one of the great features of the VIP Vision uh, network video recorders and IP cameras, the WatchGuard network video recorders, IP cameras, and HD analog systems, and the SecureView HD analog systems uh, is events, okay? So triggering on events. So let's say when either um, motion's detected or there's an input on the recorder triggered, or let's say uh, we've set up tripwire or intrusion detection or missing object detection, something like that. Um, it's really useful, those events, we can, we can trigger from that things on the recorder. So I could, for instance, I could start recording, I could trigger an output, I could send an email. What would be really useful though in situations like that is if I got notifications on my phone um, on every event. Now, we can do that using the mobile DMSS app, whether that be GDMSS on Android or iDMSS on iOS. We can get notifications and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set them up. I'm gonna be doing this on an Android phone, it's a Galaxy S9, um, but anything that I show you in this video applies equally to the iPhone. Now I'm gonna be using GDMSS version 4.5, which is the latest as of recording this video. Okay, so there's a few steps that we need to go through here. The first one obviously is making sure that we have the trigger set up on the recorder. The second one is making sure that we have the recorder set up in the phone. And um, from there, we're going to basically set our notifications. Now, I'm gonna show you the first section, just making sure that we've got the trigger set up on the recorder. As for setting the device up on the phone, um, there is, an, is another video showing you how to do that and I direct you there. And then once, uh, once that's done, I'm going to just show you how to do it on the Android phone, show you how to set up that notification. So first things first, I'm gonna jump across to a recorder here, whoops. Jump. Okay, so our recorder. First thing I'm gonna do is select right click and main menu and I'm gonna log in with my pattern password. Um, you may need to log in with your uh, password instead. Now, I'm gonna be doing this on a VIP Vision Network video recorder. Um, this is basically just the, the setup on the recorder side, okay? It varies a little bit for the secure view, um, you know, HD CBI recorders and things like that. Um, and obviously if I was going to set it up directly on a camera, that would vary as well. But essentially we're, the first thing we need to do is just set up something to trigger from, okay? So in this case, I'm gonna do a really nice and basic video detection or motion detection on video, okay? And I'm gonna set that on channel one, which is the, the camera that you're seeing me on here that we're looking at in the background here. So the first thing for me to do is to enable it Okay, and I'm going to set a region. Okay, and I'm gonna leave my sensitivity and threshold detection here. Obviously you would trim that depending on, on what was around, but what I am going to do is remove a large section of this so that I can trigger it. So I can actually put my hand into the motion detection area and I'm gonna trigger based off that. So first thing I'm going to do is right click. Ooh. Right click once and then I'm going to mask out this whole area. My mouse wants to cooperate. And I'm just going to leave. Get it right eventually. There we go. So I'm just gonna leave this section over here active so I can reach into it and trigger it when I need to. Okay, so okay, so I'm gonna take one step back, so I'm gonna right click and I'm going to apply that. Now we have that set, that section set. So just to show you again, this is the region that we're gonna be triggering on, this red region over here. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is make sure that that's actually working. Okay, so on these recorders, um, it will actually show me in a little notification section down the bottom here if you see where the mouse is, when there's motion being detected. So the first thing I'm gonna do is reach in. Okay, you see that little red running man icon down the bottom? I know it's kind of hard to see, but that's a good indication that motion detection is working properly on the recorder, okay? You'll see that'll fade away shortly. Just depends on our, our pre and post settings. There you go, okay. So just to trigger it one more time, reach in, there we go. Okay, so you can see it there. Excellent, so now, at this point, we know that the recorder is set up. Um, like I said, depends on the device that you're actually going to configure. So if you're doing this on an IP camera directly, you do it through the web interface. If you were doing it on a SecureView or WatchGuard uh, series um, 
CVR or XVR, what you would be doing there would be pretty similar, but the user interface would be a little bit different, okay? And we will have going forward uh, some other videos sort of showing you how to set that up. So the next thing we need to do actually is jump across to our Android handset. So I'm gonna do that now. Now I'm already in the GDMSS app, but just to show you how to open that, GDMSS Plus, I must emphasize GDMSS Plus 4.5, okay? If you're using GDMSS Lite, you will notice it will be very different. You wanna be using the Plus version of the app. Um, it used to be paid for, but it's now free. So definitely recommend that you're using the Plus version because otherwise nothing that I'm saying here will make sense. So the first thing we need to do is tap on the home icon. Okay, and um, I'm going to go to device down the bottom here. Now I'm gonna be using the demo room device. You can see that device there. Um, as I mentioned before, you must make sure that the device has already been added and I'm assuming that it's already been added in this video. So we'll just double check to make sure it's working though. So I'm gonna go back to home and then to preview and then I'm gonna tap up here on the top right into the device list, tap demo room and tap start live preview. Now this camera here is the one in question and as I mentioned before, waving my hand, this is the one that you're watching me on. Okay, so we know that that's working. We know that we can live view at this point. So everything's good. The next thing that we need to do though is we need to turn on notifications. So I'm gonna tap home and notifications are actually in the message section down here. Now, it's a little bit tricky from this point. Messages is actually where we're gonna see our, um, any push notifications that come through to the phone. That's where they're gonna show up. They're gonna show up inside this messages section here. But as you can see at the moment, we've got nothing. Okay, so I'm gonna to need to add a device. And to add a device, we actually tap this icon here up in the top left. Kind of looks like a flag with a plus next to it. I'm gonna tap that. And as you can see at the moment, I've got two devices and both of them are turned off for notifications. Okay, so I've got the Solar Mini PTZ. As I mentioned before though, I'm gonna select Demo Room. And I'm gonna turn notifications on. This is a global setting for the recorder, okay, but this is not actually saying what I'm going to turn on, okay? So I'm gonna turn this on and it's going to give me the option. Now, the next thing that I need to do is I need to actually select what it is that we're going to trigger on. Now, this varies depending on the device that you're connecting to, okay? What, which you know, functions from here it actually supports. So for instance, this camera that I'm currently going to show you on supports IVS, it supports motion detection, and I believe it supports uh, defocus and local alarm because it has a local alarm output. However, it will not support stereo vision or thermal imaging because obviously it's not a thermal camera. It doesn't have stereo cameras on the camera either. So none of those there will work. But for this case, like I said before, we've set up the motion detection on the recorder. So we have head detection in here and motion detection. It's actually motion detection by itself. This camera does not support head detection. And what I'm going to do here is just select the channel that I need to select. So as, as we looked at before, it's channel one and it's called IPC. That's only called IPC though, because it has no name. If we assigned a name to the camera, you would see that in here. So I'm gonna tap that and I'm gonna go back. And just to show you, if I go back in, you can see that that's been selected and it stayed selected. I don't need to save at this point, okay? So tap back, tap back one more time now we need to save, okay? So I'm gonna tap save up here. Now I left everything else the same, okay? Everything else in there the same. Um, I'll come back into that in a, section, in a second just to show you um, what's gonna happen on the notification. But as you can see, demo room here no longer says close. It's just, uh, it is set up now. So I'm gonna step back from there. And now that's, that's actually it. We are set up for notifications. We're set up for notifications and everything will now hopefully trigger. Okay, so I'm gonna jump. Actually, let's, let's go to the recorder first up. So I'm gonna jump across to the recorder. Now, obviously over in, yeah, this section here was where I set the notification before, or I set the, the not the notification I should say, but the motion. So I'm gonna move my hand into that section, but before I do that, I'm actually gonna jump back to the phone. So I'm back at the phone here. Now I can still be within the app, but I'm actually going to close the app just to show you that it doesn't matter whether you're in the app or not, you'll receive the notification, okay? So this is very important because obviously you don't wanna to have to have the app open in order to receive the notification. So I'm gonna tap okay. And I'm just gonna sit at the home screen here. 
Now, I'm gonna move my hand into, jump back across to the camera here. Okay, so I'm moving my hands up into the section and you'll see that we've triggered motion down the bottom. Now, jump across to the phone and you'll see that we've got motion detection as a notification. If I tap that, there you go, it's pulled up that camera. Now, you'll see that we're actually in live view at the moment, okay? So that's what we're set up to do. If we wanted to view the event, we could actually tap, um, do you see this section over on the other side here? Up here, this little film clip icon. So if I wanted to see what, what it was that actually triggered the event, I can tap that. And it will open up the playback window and then it will go back to the section where I move my hand in which is what the event was that actually triggered the motion detection. Okay, so that's obviously the most useful way of doing that because um, you know, usually you wanna be actually seeing uh, what's, what triggered the event because often you won't see the notification or you'll see the notification but you won't see it until after the event's already happened. So you might wanna tap that to switch from live back to the event. Now, if for whatever reason you actually wanna see that pop up straight away every time without actually having to um, select playback rather than live view, we can actually set that and we set that via the app. So I'm gonna jump back to the app again. So you'll note that we're still playing that event from before. So I'm gonna step back and again, we're gonna tap the little, well, we're still in the messages section. You can see from down the bottom here, we're in the messages indication here. Um, before I do it, actually, you'll see now that we have that message showing up in here, that motion detection event. Now it's grayed out because we've already viewed it, but I'll show you in a moment what happens if we haven't viewed the event yet. So first thing we're gonna do though, is we're gonna select the plus, the flag icon up the top here again. I'm gonna select demo room again, cause that's what we had before. And the push type, okay? So you'll see push type here. So by default, the push type is set to live preview. I can change that from live preview to video or to image. Now, if you set image, you do actually need to have snapshotting set up. So I'm going to set video, okay, which is what I select you suggest you set if you wanna change this function. And again, tap save. Subscribe successfully. Okay, great. So that's set up once more. So now I'm just gonna test that again, okay? So I'm gonna jump back to the recorder here and I'm gonna stick my hands back out over into the section where I'm gonna trigger motion. You can see that motion's gone. Now I'm gonna jump back to the phone and you'll see we've got a notification on the phone. Okay, great. So again, like I mentioned before, you see the grayed out one that we looked at previously and you'll see the, whoop, I'm not gonna delete that there. You'll see the one above it, which is not yet grayed out. That's the event that we've just triggered, okay? The little red dot beside it indicates that it's new. So I'm gonna tap on that and it's going to now because of what I've set up, it's gonna take me directly to the event rather than showing me live. So shortly you'll see my hand go into the section where it was triggered. And if I wanted to do the reverse of before, if now I wanted to view live, I can tap on the live feed. And we're back viewing live. Okay, so that's, that's a, a brief indication of how to use notifications on a phone. Like I said, it's really quite a useful function, really good thing to, um, if you've installed a system for people, um, it's really a great value add thing for them. So um, while you have to be aware that um, obviously you probably don't wanna be triggering on motion if it's an external camera, okay, you may wanna do a video tripwire instead, or maybe you wanna set up an alarm input and trigger on that. Um, Obviously, anything that triggers on the recorder is going to show up on the phone. So, you know, nuisance notifications and things like that are something that you just need to watch out for. But if you set it up correctly and you set up your notifications correctly, this is a really, really handy tool to have. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. Um, hope it's been useful. If you liked it, feel free to mash that like button down the bottom. Uh, tap subscribe if you'd like to view further videos like this. Or if you've got any further questions, comments, anything like that, leave them below. Thanks for watching.